All right, good evening. Hey guys. I uh, haven't done a deck tech in a while, been, you know, slowly playing. Uh, what is it? Uh, early 2020, I think it's February. Uh, world Championships, that's a good time uh, to figure out. Uh, world Championship just uh, happened this weekend. If you're Canada, it was family day long weekend. And um, things are good. Enjoying myself. Spend some time with the fam. Uh, my kids are actually outside playing um, some Fortnite together. Uh, it's a thing kids do nowadays, I guess. And uh, I'm here. I'm looking over some of my decks. So I want to talk about this bad boy right here. This dwarf <clears throat> Torbrand Fiend of the Red Fell. Yeah, two red, two, uh, sorry, three red, three mountains, one colorless, so four mana. Um, he's a legendary creature, Dwarf Noble. He's a 2-4. And he says, if a red creature, or sorry, my apologies, if a red source you control would deal damage, so any red source to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. So that's not bad. Um, currently, he's tearing it up in uh, standards and in worlds. He was in... Um, uh, many of the decks, so I thought I'd talk about my EDH version. Um, and certainly there are different ways to build this, so don't get upset if you don't like this build. I enjoy this build. It's it's fairly simple. I call it my uh, Torbram who punishes and has pets. <laughs> it's a long uh, name, but that's what it is. Uh, you know. Anyway, so I enjoy playing him, and you know what? Because he's three mountains, I, uh, you know, mono red is the way you want to go with this. He is uh, by far the most fun mono red deck I've had. And red is a great color. You know, if you, you know, if you think red is one of the more weaker colors in Commander, I would um, argue otherwise. <clears throat> it's a very strong color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't even remember how many lands. Ten, speaking of, of lands. Um, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty nine 29 lands. And you're saying, whoa, that's slow. But you know what? You'll see the mana count in this deck is slow to begin with. I run these two just because if you get a Valakut and get the copy of Valakut um, with his triggers, oh, oh, sorry, uh, is it a red, red source? Is this considered a red source? I would argue that it is, but I could be wrong. So this may pump it up. And even if this doesn't work, even if this is um, not triggered by uh, Torbrand, just three points of damage, double that. That's six points of damage every time uh, your sixth or, or after mountain comes into play. And for those of you that don't know, you need this plus five mountains. So on your sixth mountain, you'll be able to start firebolting people. So 29 lands, um, a couple of mana rocks, one, two, three, four, five. Um, so I wanted something, uh, two or less that produced colored uh, mana because Torben really cares about red. So I went with these. Now, these three come into play tapped, I know, but they've worked for me uh, so far. Uh, this one doesn't. And the Lotus is working uh, great in this deck because on its own, it taps for three three mana <clears throat> when Torbram's in play. So if you have other creatures, and Torbram's got a lot of pets, you know, he likes to call in his pets, so be careful. Um, this can, uh, can generate a lot of mana for you. And then two other non-mana artifacts. Ice Cron Scepter and Mirage Mirror. And if you hear my squeaky chair in the background, I apologize. Uh, hey, I can't afford new chairs. <laughs> anyway, Ice Cron Scepter, Mirage Mirror. Now this uh, can copy any instant, two or less, and there's tons of them in the deck. And why not have a lightning bolt on a stick um, every turn? That's not bad. And then Mirage Mirror can uh, copy any of your creatures, anybody else's uh, creatures, what is it, artifacts or enchantments until the end of the turn. This has been fantastic. If you're not running this card in your EDH deck, um, I would say 
have a rethink. Find a slot for it. Give it a try. It's only three mana, five mana actually. If you want to count the full cost of me playing it and then being able to activate it, um, give it a shot. So this can become a soul ring. This can become somebody's general. This can um, become uh, a nasty uh, bugger on the field. Give it a shot. Anyways, so those are the, so not too many artifacts. <clears throat> Cause you know what? You, a lot of people play artifact hate. So why just put them out there for people to smash? You know what I enjoy when I play uh, small amounts of artifacts? When I see people sitting with cards in their hand and they're grunting and groaning because they have no artifacts to smash uh, because they're not playing many. <laughs> That's fun. Anyway, uh, enchantments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Um, Seal of Fire, just because it's uh, with Torgram a lightning bolt on a stick. Right, so whenever you want to uh, use it, you can use it. Uh, mana bars, because um, why not take three points of damage every time you tap a land for mana? That's nice. Uh, this uh, bad boy, I'm running mono red. I only have two non basics, so what do I care if all my lands are mountains? If you're running non basics, look out. <laughs> Friends of mine at uh, our local table, um, at the fight shack that we play at, um, they have a special place in their hearts for this card. And I'm not going to say what they say about it, but um, sorry, guys. I apologize. <laughs> uh, goblin bombardment, because when you want to wipe the board or, or kill my creature, I can, uh, I can uh, deal some damage. At least three points of damage for every creature I sack. Uh, I can't remember if he triggers, but anyways, that can somebody can answer that question. Um, experimental frenzy, because you know, why not just play off the top of your deck and just build up your hand? This is a fantastic card. If you don't run it in a red deck, run it. Pyrohemia, because this controls the board if there's a lot of creatures out, and with uh, Torbram, your creatures only take one. Everybody else's will take uh, three for each one mana. So. This is a great card, and my favorite in Torbran is Repercussions, because <clears throat> I'm going to leave this card off to the side here, because when this deals damage, when you, other creatures, well, it affects you too, but when other creatures take damage, they take damage plus two. So, this is an enchantment. Let's just talk about this for a second, so people can understand. It's three, three mana. Two red, one colorless. Uh, whenever a creature is dealt damage, I gotta put on my glasses because I'm getting old. Um, a repercussion, so this, it's a red source, deals that much damage to that creature's controller. Hmm. So if this is in play and I attack and, I, and the creature takes three points of damage, it also does three points of damage to its controller's face, but it will take three points of damage, and then when it goes to the controller's face, Torbrand here will pump it up by another two. That's five points of damage. That's not bad. <laughs> so this guy, with another card in here that's going to be coming up, is uh, potentially lethal. So I have one my one slot. I think it's 11 spells. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11. I'm going to just talk about these first 11. Um, they're all one mana, okay, and they all deal damage. All right, that's that's the idea, because um, you know being able to when Torbrand out to play in response, he, he gets targeted in response. I go, you know, pay two life, take three points of damage. Pay one red, take five points of damage. Right, pay one red, take four points of damage. This adds up. Also, I want these early in my hand. Because oftentimes when you're playing your play groups, people like to play small creatures that ramp them out or they, they do something, whether it's fetching lands, tapping for mana, uh, protecting something. Well, it's like, okay, you want to play Deathrite Shaman? There you go. There's two points of damage. It's, it dies. So you get to slow your opponents down because you know what? A lot of times uh, people take their opening hands and they, oh, I got this mana creature. I'm good to go. I'm good for the next few turns. And then you take it out and they're like, ah, oh, damn it. Now I'm stuck and I'm behind. So there's 11 of these guys. I ran more 
but I think the sweet spot is 11. Um, certainly you can change that up and there's tons of them. I want to point out that something like this and this, so flame jab and lava dart, I can retrace this. So I can bring this back by checking the land and, and playing its cost and reusing that. I can instantly with Torbrand Mount deal three points of damage, then sack a mountain and do another three point. That's six points of damage with a lava dart. So <clears throat> those are cool little tricks. Uh, those are the ones that I put in. You can certainly change that up. These next couple <clears throat> are a few spells. One, two, three, four, five, six. These next six are meant for board wipes. So I'm going to uh, deal damage to all uh, creatures. Museum Mortars is two mana, four points to one creature. It's not bad with Tor Brown out at six. Or I can do uh, four points to all creatures I don't control with Tor Brown. That's um, uh, six points of damage to all creatures I don't control for six mana. That's not bad. How about Blazing Volley, one mana with Tor Brown out? It's three points of damage to all creatures uh, my opponents control. That's, that's devastating. Uh, Whip Flare two damage to each creature. So even if I don't have Torbram out, I can play this and uh, wipe the board of mana dorks or one ones or whatever, uh, whatever's out early. Pyroclasm, same thing. Volcanic Fallout and this bad boy, Blasphemous now. Okay. So <clears throat> for those of you that love to play heavy creature decks and this guy's out, um, even if Torbram, which often enough Torbram will be targeted and removed, let's be honest, right? Like this dwarf uh, is a bugger and nobody likes him <laughs> uh, unless he's on their side of the field. So he, he usually gets uh, targeted. You know, I'm not running tons of creatures, so either one or, or two are usually on the field. But if there are none and repercussions out and there's a lot of creatures and you blasphemous act, well, that's 13 points of damage for each creature to each player off of repercussions. So this is a cool combo. Um, I would run, if you're not running it in this style deck, like a mono red deck, and you want to play it, you know, it'll, it would take you at the most in one turn, uh, three red and nine other mana. So that's 12 mana to play this. So you play this, it resolves, and you play this and kill everybody at once. But this is... This is potentially game ending if your opponents are running uh, creature heavy decks. So this little combo in here is fantastic. I've had this played against me many times and it always sucked. <laughs> I never liked it. And then, you know, I never went to it because, hey, who likes to play combos that, that, that suck, right? Uh, but then I'm like, yeah, no, it makes sense. It's just it, people don't see it coming. So this is fantastic. And if you can find this, uh, uh, faster you can get to it that's awesome but I just like to get it by chance so these are some uh, other burn spells I have a braid because that can go under um, uh, Isochron Scepter and, and you know who doesn't want to deal three points and destroy artifact each turn a bane fire because that could finish off an opponent's uncounterable and this just loops in your deck right uh, this card I'm thinking about changing it's not bad. Five man, five damage for five mana. It's not too bad. I'm going to say something. This is. Uh, I want to pause here with fork. And for those of you who don't know what fork does, for two red, it's an instant that you can copy any instant or sorcery spell. I think uh, target spell. Yeah, instants or sorcery. So <clears throat> this is meant as counter magic. So when you're playing against blue mages. This is considered counter magic. You know, if you're playing a green a deck and you want to ramp, you can also ramp. But red has a, um, a good suite of counter spells, right? Because this is how I look at these cards. We have Fork Reverberate, Power Blast, and Red Elemental Blast. So in a mono red deck, I have access to, to four counter spells, right? So someone, I go to play Torbram, assuming I have mana, okay? Uh, I play Torbram, opponent uh, counters it because they don't want to deal with it. I fork the counter, copying it, targeting the counter. All right, it's counter spell. Reverberate, Pyroblast, right? Elemental Blast. These are even better. They're one mana. 
These have the added bonus of destroying blue permanents. So those are fantastic. And you could technically just run these two, but I'd like to run these four. I find that's a, that's a good balance. I've always enjoyed that. Red Tutor, how about destroy everybody else's artifacts? Chaos Warp, because if you're not running Chaos Warp in a red deck, I don't know what you're doing. Um, and then these guys, these rituals. My kids are fighting out there. I hope you can't hear that. This is why you have children, right, folks? <laughs> <laughs> I love my children. Don't get me wrong. They're boys. Okay, so Desperate Ritual, Pyrotic Ritual, A Seething Song, and a Geo Surge. So obviously Torbram likes mana and he needs red mana. So instead of doing um, mana rocks, like these could have been four mana rocks, I decided to do these rituals because they're going to give you mana, right? For two mana, I get three. For two, I get three. This one for three, I get one, two, three, four, five. And for four, I get eight or seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven mana. So these are great way, ways to pump out your general. Even if he gets removed, then you, then you, this will pay for the added uh, tax to your general. So that's, those are good. And then wheels. I've run three of them. <clears throat> Winds and change, folks, if you're, uh, get this in an opening hand. I love to keep this. If I see this in the beginning, I just keep. I don't care what I have. As long as I have one mana, obviously, to cast it, it's a sorcery. So turn one, everybody's kept, and even, especially if I go first, it's it's that, that much more satisfying because you go uh, mountain, tap, everybody shuffle your, your, your hands, draw seven. And you're like, wow, why do you want to give your opponents more cards? Well, it doesn't matter. They kept their opener because they liked what they had. Um... And you've taken that away from them, and now you're giving them a whole uh, new uh, set of hands or new set of cards. I've been burned a lot of times where <clears throat> I've had a great opener, play a card, and I'm about to uh, set up, and then winds of change, and all of a sudden I got m mana flooded, right? Land flooded. So, great card. And reforge the soul because it can be miracled for two or sit in my hand for five. <laughs> And then Wheel of Fortune. And now to my creatures. <clears throat> so, I mean, the heart blood of this deck is to have some creatures out and you're putting pressure and, and damage with, uh, with your creatures. And if you burn spells, um, can end a game quick for your opponent. And this little guy, when he comes out, he calls to his, um, to his creatures. But he's got some help. First of all, he's got a god, so... Um, my Torbrun likes to um, uh, pay homage to Hazard, to Fervent. Uh, this, this could very well be uh, Perforos. But we say one god in the deck, right? You can only worship one god. And you can be pagan and worship many, but that's fine. You know, no one's uh, discriminating here, but in, in, in my deck, it's, it's just the one. Anyways, he's instructable. He's got haste to 5 4, whatever. You know, look it up. He can discard to deal damage to each opponent right um he can also swing for seven with torbran that's fantastic but you know he can pitch and deal damage you know once you get people low enough uh this god gets uh quite deadly and he's got two top end generals here um jaya is is his main squeeze over here and she just blows up uh, uh permanence blue especially if you're playing blue jaya doesn't like you Okay, she's got this thing. I think she went out with Jace or something like that. And that ended weirdly. But she she just destroys blue permanence. Just a bang, boom, gone. Out of here. Don't want to see it. So uh, Torbrand likes to hang with her. And we got Magus because Magus refills Torbrand's hand. And he's also a 3-3. Three, three. When he attacks with Torbrand around, uh, that's five points of damage. And that clock is serious. And then we got some um, high-end soldiers here. If you haven't met Annex, this guy, his um, powers uh, devotion to, to red. So even with just these two guys in play, he's a 5-3. When he hits with no blockers, um, he's dealing 7 points of damage. Like, that's, that's crazy. Like, if you look at the current um, meta in the worlds, you know, that's another feature card right there. 
Torbran likes him. And Captivating Crew, because if you want to put out some creatures, hey, especially if they're red, let me take control of them for a turn. And if I got Goblin Bombardment out, I'll sack it. <laughs> I'll deal three points of damage to you. Uh, so I've had a lot of people, when they realize that, look at me with this salty look. <laughs> so I put this down. Torbram's out. They got, uh, I don't know, a Niv Mizzet. And then I, I gain control of it. Um, and then I attack with uh, Niv. Niv deals seven points of damage. And then I'll sack it to Goblin Bombardment and deal another three points of damage. That's uh, ten points in one swing. And people are looking at, at me going, what you, excuse me? What did you just do? <laughs> they're like, oh, no. this you got to stop this. But the problem is, especially if the Goblin Bombardment is out, okay, you're going to target this with removal or this? You want to target this, uh, that's fine. You want to target this, that's fine too. Now, ideally, you want to get rid of them all, but that's not always uh, the case. And now we got our, our worker bees. Okay, these guys are the heavy lifters in, in this creature deck. Torbram's got some employees. Okay, he's got an ogre battle driver because why not give everything plus two in haste? So if, um, where, where is he? <laughs> Just imagine a scenario like this. Ogre battle drivers in play. So it's Torbram. On your turn, you go to cast him. He comes in now. He's got one, two, three, four, another three, and that's seven. Plus two in haste from this guy. Um, that's eight, nine. Swing for 11. <laughs> and this guy's swinging too, right? So Ogre battle driver does some work over here, folks. Um, uh, Squee, because uh, he's um, Gia's best friend. Gia discards him and he keeps coming back. Oh no, he keeps um, he keep recasting him. Sorry. It's the other Squee that, that keeps coming back with, for Gia. And then Gutter Snipe, because Gutter Snipe here, every time you play an instant, he's doing two damage. But with uh, Torbram around, he's inspired, so he does four points of damage. And then my, uh, uh, this is the this is the guy that I like to say <clears throat> is the gatekeeper for all the creatures. He kind of um, keeps them under wraps and keeps them under control. It's the Goblin Chain Whirler. So this little bad boy, oh no. Oh no, that's my wife trying to call me in the middle of the recording. I guess she really wants me to uh, um, come upstairs. I guess I gotta wrap this up. Um, so the Chain Whirler, for three mana, he's a three, three first strike. So with Torbram, that's five. When he enters the battlefield, it deals one damage. So this deals one damage to each opponent and each creature and planeswalker they control. So each opponent, take three. Each creature, take three. And each planeswalker, take three. <laughs> he's so good. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this up with the creatures, Torbram's creatures that he likes to summon and come on. He's his pets, and if anybody gets offended by that, I apologize. This, these are these are nice pet cards of mine. So we have the Mind Sparker because it's got first strike, three points, five points of damage, you know. And anytime somebody plays a white or blue instant or sorcery, this deals two damage to uh, that player. So <laughs> you want to play blue? Mm -mm. You're going to take some damage. How about this guy? Rampaging for Rostodon. You guys remember him from a few uh, uh, standards ago. Menace. Players can't gain uh, life, but whenever a creature comes into play, this deals one damage to their controller. Oh, no, no. It does three points of damage to their controller. So that's not, that's not bad. Um, how about this this little guy? Infernal Titan, when it comes into play, deal three damage, divided as you choose. So that target takes three, that target takes three, and that target takes three. <laughs> that ain't bad. Now, we've uh, we've had arguments, and I, and I can't remember the resolve on whether or not you can target um, uh, a creature multiple times with separate targets. I don't think you can, but that's to be discussed, and people can answer that question. How about Flame Tom? Kabu, how about six points of damage to a creature when it comes into play? And it also attacks for six with Torbram, obviously. So, that's not bad. Runaway Steamkin, oh yeah, this little guy, just you're playing spells as a 4 4, and then he adds mana for your other things. Oh, how about a Stormbreath Dragon? Hey, 
Electrolyte, Haste, Flying, Swing Across for 6 points damage. At haste for 5, that's not bad. You can also get plus 3, plus 3 if you Monstrous it. 7, 8, 9 points of damage? What? Thunder Maul Hel Hellkite. How about this does 1 point of damage to each flyer when it comes into play. This is Torbrand's favorite dragon because it does 3 points of damage to each creature with flying when it comes into play. Oh. I really gotta wrap this up. Um, anyways, and it swings across for seven points of damage. Phoenix of Ash. This is a new addition. Uh, this keeps coming back. It also comes back with a plus one counter. You can make it bigger and it does damage. This card loves Torbran. How about Hellrider? Every time it attacks all other attacking creatures, deal one point, oh no, sorry, three points of damage. Haste. Tectonic Giant because he deals three damage to each opponent when he attacks so six sorry five points of damage plus another five points of damage see where i'm going with this how about uh rorex the blade wing seven points of damage flying haste and two more tunneling geopede every time a land comes into play one point of damage to each opponent or three points of damage to each opponent bone crusher giant you can do Four points of damage at instant speed, or deal six points of damage on the attack. This is a must-have in, in in Torbran. Anyways, that's my Torbran deck. It's it's fairly linear, you know. It, it's it's going to run at your life total and try to kill you as fast as it can. And I wanted it to be that every time I played a, a creature uh, of his, it, people were like, "Oh crap, I could deal." With because this will hit me for six or deal with this because if you don't want to deal with this and you want to deal with this I'll, I'll take four points damage each turn right and you're tapping yourself usually you're spending your resources taking get rid of one or the other you know and once you get one or two of these or three of these out the games start to end fairly quickly anyways that's my Torbram deck i hope you guys enjoyed that we'll talk to you soon ciao